Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Now I was having a chat with General Dan, who you'll have seen in a few of our battle reports the other day, and we were talking about the difference between what our perception of historical soldiers was and how that changed from the reality. And I don't just mean that they didn't fight in their dress uniform, because actually some units did. The Russian guard at uh, Leipzig fought in their dress uniform at Dresden they fought in their overcoats obviously the Imperial Guard very famously fought in their overcoats at Waterloo so we're not necessarily talking about the choice of uniform to wear but how the troops looked within the uniforms that they were in now it just so happened that I came across this extract uh, in the week so I thought hmm, I wonder if I can do a video on that and I wanted to compare and contrast the official history of something with an eyewitness account. Now, many of you will know that I've talked a lot in the Prussian videos, particularly about the importance of parades down Unter der Linden. And I say that because Unter der Linden is the main thoroughfare through the center of Berlin. It leads from the Brandenburg Gate, and it's a very evocative scene. So I quite like it, but I've never really explained it. So hopefully in this video, I'll put up some pictures of Unter der Linden. You'll have seen one if you saw my post I put up yesterday. Apologies for the lateness of this video. Not only is it a day late, but it's probably going to be a little bit time late as well. So I do apologize for that. But yes, yeah, so there was an official account of Napoleon's entry into Berlin in 1806, having defeated the French, the Prussians, sorry, yes, <laughs> not defeat the French, having defeated the Prussians at the twin battles of Jena Augstadt, he then entered the capital. And the official release reads, quote, The Bulletin de la Grande Armée, 21st Bulletin, 28th of October, 1806, Berlin. Yesterday, the 27th, the Emperor made a solemn entrance into Berlin. He was accompanied by the Prince de Neufchâtel, I think that is Marshal Berthier, the Marshals Davo and Augaro, his Grand Maréchal du Palais, Duroc, his Grand Ecurie and his ADCs. Marshal Lefebvre led the march with the Imperial Foot Guard. The Carasiers from Nansuti's division lined the route. The Emperor rode in between the Grenadiers and the Chasseur à Cheval of his guard. He dismounted at the palace at three in the afternoon. He was received by the Grand Maréchal de Palais du Roc. The huge crown lined the route. Charlottenburg Avenue in Berlin is very beautiful. The entrance by this gate is magnificent. The weather superb. All the town officials presented by General Ulin, the military governor, came to the gate to offer the keys of the city to the emperor. These officials then retired to His Majesty's residence, General Prince de Hartsfeld at their head. End quote. So steering stuff, I'm sure you'll agree. You know, we get a real sense of the pageantry and the glory of these troops marching through. And I think that that is very much how we see our troops. We look at them and, you know, they're these noble paragons. Well, there was a Berliner. Now, by Berliner, I mean a person of Berlin, not a cocktail sausage, as is, is often said. Uh, so, uh, a resident of Berlin had a slightly different take on the parade. And he wrote this, quote, The first infantryman entered. He was tall and thin with a pale face covered in black, scrubby hair. We were amazed at his garb. He had a short cape covering his body. On his head was a small battered hat of indescribable shape, but pushed so far back and at such an insolent angle that the face and hat were for us the object of great amazement. The cloth trousers were dirty and exceedingly torn, and his feet were bare in his worn-out shoes. A small, hairy dog watched his mouth very attentively as he bit off large chunks of bread to throw to him. Just imagine it. A soldier with a dog on a leash and half a loaf stuck on the end of his bayonet. From his musket hung a goose, and on his hat, instead of insignia, gleamed a pewter spoon. End quote. I, <laughs> I particularly like the goose hanging from the musket, but my favourite part about that entire description is the pewter spoon tucked in his hat. Now, some manufacturers do do this. Victrix has a lovely um, spoon in the bicorn of some guys in their early set. It's actually a very underrated set, that one, I think. So there are figures out there that show this more, shall we say, campaign dress attitude. But that's a soldier on the entry to Berlin. And you've got to think, you know, in 1806, this guy's been at the Counts of Bologna, probably, since 1804. He's marched through 
Central Europe. He's, he's fought at Austerlitz. He's fought at Jena or Auerstadt. He's then going to go on to fight at Elau, Friedland. These great battles in you know the next years. So uh, can you imagine? You know, you've got a pair of white trousers. You sleep in the open, and you've got to go from uh, the Atlantic coast. Uh, Bologna, I just forgot where I was in, the Atlantic coast, right through Europe, right through to you know, Berlin, Vienna, all these places, and fight battles on the way. How are your white trousers going to be at the end of it? And that's why I think, you know, a lot of uh, modelers, they spend a lot of time getting the exact buttons right, the right shade of blue for the French coats, or the, you know, the right hats of the right period. And I think this description there, and that was the description I found after the chat with Dan, I think that really shows that I, this this idea of uniforms and everyone looking the same is probably not that likely. I think maybe if you had the start of a war, so for instance, 1812, I think the French were probably gearing up. I think you'd have French in all sorts of different outfits. I think the Russians would probably be in better uniform, as in you know they would look more alike than the French would at that time. Because they'd had those years to rest and recuperate. All right. Yes, they were fighting in Finland. And yes, they'd been fighting down in the Crimea against the Ottomans. But by and large, the army had managed to re-equip and look after themselves. They also had the new issue of things like Shakos as well. So there's that difference as well. But by and large, I think that that would show them as being something of a fresh formation. There was talk in the... I think it's in Albion Triumphant 2 where they describe the Imperial Guard as looking like ruffians, you know, they're brigands, they look like. And it's also in my Imperial Guard infantry video as well. So we have this romantic image, I certainly do anyway, of our soldiers all looking pristine, ready for action. This is the uniform that was issued to the 2nd Swiss Battalion Regiment, so that's what they're all going to look like. They all had, you know, red coats with yellow facings and white trousers. Well, yeah, they did. But when you're painting them, you can paint the odd guy with like brown linen trousers or maybe dark blue trousers for my Vistula Legion. I've painted a good mix of dark blue, which was the winter trousers, and white, which is the summer. And I think that these little, these little things can really help tell the story of our armies. I think the more raw a unit is, the more freshly raised, and I use that with small f, small r, not in the sense of the black powder rules, although, you know, maybe, then they're going to look more uniform. As these guys campaign, they look a lot scruffier. Stuff gets worn out and replaced with local alternatives. So, you know, I, I, I don't really know where I'm going with this video. I just wanted to, to bring up those two quotes because I thought they were quite fun to compare them and just say that, you know, when we're doing our figures, don't sweat on whether someone had, you know, this regiment had pewter buttons or brass buttons. Ultimately, it doesn't really matter. People would change them. They'd get, like, pinged off. They'd replace them. Whatever. I think we have this image of uniforms. I don't necessarily think that that's as historically accurate as we would like it to be. Well, that's it for today. Thank you very much. Uh, this weekend, I'm hoping to do a another uh, How to Play video. We've done How to Play the British Cavalry. So... I'll give you a advance warning for anyone who's watching this far into the video. We'll probably be doing how to play British infantry. If that's something that sounds interesting to you, please make sure that you are subscribed to the account because I've had messages from a few people who have been unsubscribed without them knowing about it. Every so often, YouTube has a bit of a purge where it gets rid of subscriptions and things like that, which is, you know, it's good. You, 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 I'd rather have a thousand subscribers who watch every video then a hundred thousand subscribers of only a thousand watch the video so you know i don't mind it but sometimes people get caught up in that i know certainly a few people i've subscribed to i've been knocked off uh, all specs tactics was one of them that's a 40k channel uh two plus tough was another one that's a age of sigma channel or warhammer channel so uh, i i've had it a couple of times so if that does sound interesting please make sure you subscribe make sure you've got the bell icon switched on as well you'll get the messages of when i post i try and post 1815 is the time that i post so look out for that as well even if you're not subbed or have the bell icon uh, clicked but thank you very much for watching and i'll see you guys next time